So I grew up in a Catholic family, and I, I, I was baptized as a young child. Um, growing up, since I, I grew, came up from a large family, my mom and dad worked a lot on Sundays, and our grandma would always pick us up for church. And um, as a young child, I, I honestly felt it was just like going through the motions, because I felt it was just a thing to do. It was a typical Catholic family. I grew up, I was an altar boy for seven or eight years. And then once I turned 18 and 19 years old, I graduated from high school. I'm not saying I, I lost my faith in God, but I just kind of quit going to church. You know, I n never gave up in God. And so I just still praying that the Christ in my soul, I, I just didn't feel any means to go to church. And um, two or three years later, I started to go to Zion Lutheran Church with my brother-in-law and sister. I was later confirmed in the Lutheran Church. You know, I didn't really get much out of going to church. I just thought it was a thing to do because everybody else was doing it. But it was much like going to the Catholic Church. It just felt like going through routine. I never really got much out of the sermons, but I went because everybody else was going. Um, about 20, 25 years ago, I was in a, I worked for my brother's construction company and I fell 20 foot, 20 foot off a extension ladder and I fell onto a cement driveway with, um, Shingles on it. I am, um, as I was laying in the Sioux Valley Hospital in Dallas Sanford, all I could think was I didn't really grasp the concept why I was still able to walk. I um, wasn't very blue for life. The only thing that came out of my accident was I had three fractures for a brace in my back. To this day, I honestly thank God every day for allowing me to still walk and get on with with my daily life. Um, about 18 years ago, 18, 17, 18 years ago, I was driving home from state, state Arts in Sioux Falls and I was in major car accident by the Salem Bypass. I got, um, I, my car went underneath a semi and I was spit out from underneath. As I came to, the car was, I didn't realize the car was dismantled at the time, but it was like a big plastic bubble was surrounding me in the car. I looked up and there was angel visor on my um on the on the car visor. I go I um went down. My cell phone and my glasses were sitting next to me, and I called my best friend who happened to be number one on my speed dial. And as I was talking to me, he um wrote down on all four knees and um burst down in tears. The only thing that came out of my accident was I had shreds of glass in my eyes. And I had a big bruise where my seatbelt was. The only thing I kept thinking was th there were a lot of guardian angels in place because after my accident with the shingles, in you know, my car accident, I should honestly suit. I, I should be in heaven and not be alive anymore. And for years and years, I would wonder myself why I was still on earth. About 12 years later, or seven or eight years later, my oldest son Riley was born. It started to make sense to me why, why God had put me on the earth. I got married to my ex-wife, and it was a really bad marriage. She put me through a lot of mental abuse. And there were lots of days when I would pray to God and ask him, I, I, I understand that you're only giving me as much as I can handle, but I'm reaching that breaking point, and I don't, don't know how far I can go. I would still go to the Lutheran church, but every time I would walk in the Lutheran church, it's like everybody was staring at me and judging me and wondering who I was. Because it's not like I didn't go to church very often, but when I did, it felt like people was judging me. I'd always sit in one of the back pews just so I can go in unnoticed. So I could just blend in the crowd. I went sporadically to church for about seven or eight years. Um, my sister, Tracy Wilson, would always invite me to go to church with her. But I would always, yeah, 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 if I had time. But I was always, I would always make excuses why I didn't have time to go. Earlier, or earlier this spring, in March or February or March, I finally, um, I started re reading the Bible every day because I have a very stressful job, and I felt like the only thing taking the stress away from my life would be to read the Bible because I would feel in a lot more uncomfortable place. Um, one night when I was on my lunch break at work, I actually called Tracy, and I thought she was going to break down in tears, 
when I asked her to see if I could go to church with her. It, it was, my, my anxiety was getting the best of me. And when I first started coming to Northridge, I would wait on the parking lot until Tracy and Paul and the kids would show up. Then I'd go to church with them. Uh, eventually, I started to take baby steps. I talked to the pastor for the first time, but myself and I and walked in the church and I sat in my own pew. It, the, during the times when I wasn't able to go to church, I could definitely feel the absence I got not in my heart. I, I feel over the last six months, of my, my anxiety issues have disappeared. I've become a stronger person and my faith and belief in God and the Holy Spirit has ne never been stronger than they are right now. I, I, I found myself talking, to, I'm not sure what spirituality they are, but I've also found myself talking about the Bible and other stuff with other coworkers, co-workers still. And there's one thing I can say about my experience at Northridge, I've become a lot stronger person. And I just won, and my main reason behind getting baptized happened at Easter Sunday. When a pastor asked us to close our eyes, I was really close to raising my hand, but I, I felt people were watching me. So I chose now and feel. So I called, um, I finally filled out a card and I asked Pastor Ben to see if I could meet with him so I could become a member of the church. That, that's my story. All right. Well, this is Ryan. There's a lot more to his story. Every one of our candidates have done a video recording of their testimony that I want you to check out online. It'll also be on the, on the, uh, um, our social media team. And that bump will be up there is also making some recordings for us as well. So grateful for that. But uh, Ryan, I, I just uh, love the verse that you chose. And uh, uh, let's read this out loud together, okay? This is Jeremiah 29, verses 11 to 13. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. And I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. When you see me with all your heart. Way to go, Ryan! <laughs> Savior. Yes. And is it your desire to live for him for the rest of your life? Yes. Based upon your